Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Apologies for the delay, life and all got in the way. It's been nearly two weeks since my last video, but I've sorted out a schedule and hopefully every Friday a video will be dropping for you a lot. The pipe in this video is shed 20 10 inch pipe. And I know recently the videos I've been dropping is all on big pipe. But soon I'll be releasing some fabricating videos on two and a half inch, things that are a little bit more intricate to do and take a bit more time and precision to make. I'm starting off by tacking the pipes together on my table. I find using the table gives you a nice flat edge to work from. And the reason why I do it on the table is because you can't fit it in the vise. And if you're going to use V-stands to level it off, you'd probably use four of them to fit it. And I find all of that takes too long, so I've gotten used to um, making everything on the table. And sometimes with welding it's so repetitive that if you can find a way to um, fab or to weld that doesn't drive you crazy, it's always a benefit. I'm rooting at 150 amps synergic and I've done the cap at 240 amps pulse and it came out nice. Now I can take that off, put it to the side, and then now I can weld my other piece. I'm using 3mm TIG wire as my spacer, and leveling it off to put tacks on it. And now I can weld this, because that's going to go on the pipe later on as a positional. A few people have commented about why I don't prep my pipe and uh, some use even cuss me for using the grinder too much. It saves me a hell of a lot of time of being able to tack it first and then using the 9 inch grinder to open up the gaps and that's how I do it for all of my pipes. So anytime you see me using a big 9 inch grinder, that's what I'm doing. It takes more grinding to do because you have to um, grind away the pipe rather than grinding your tacks but in the end it saves so much time. It's a class 2 job, so the welds you see here are more than good enough for the task. And now I can assemble the pipe. I like to um, get it roughly in position and then tack it. Because there's nothing to the pipe, it doesn't have to be 100% level before you put your first tack on, because it doesn't have to be level to anything. So at this point here is simply just making a T. You put your first two tacks on, flip it 90 degrees, and now you can put the rest of the tacks on.
I repositioned the pipe, ready to level off the last piece of pipe. And that shim saves me so much time trying to level off pipes. Now I flip the pipe 90 degrees, ready to put the flanges on. And that's my spider clamp. And it makes putting weld necks on easier as well. And installing the flanges is self-explanatory. You make sure your bolt holes are level to the pipe and then make sure the face of the flange is level to the pipe as well. And again, the shim comes in handy, keeps the gap open. and now I can check the overall measurement. It was meant to be 1,970 mil long, but because it's weld necks and I'm welding four of them, I made sure it was a couple mil longer. Usually the pipe doesn't shrink on something this big, but four welds is a lot. So I'd make it about two mil longer, three mil, but with these jobs, there's a three mil tolerance anyway. So I'm well within tolerances. And I've sped the video up here, welding the butt welds. This was the piece I made earlier. So I roughly get it in position, level, and I put a tack on it. And now I can pick it up and down without having to worry about the pipe to pipe alignment anymore. Because I used the level to check the faces of the two flanges, standing it up, it was perfectly level. So I just put my two tacks on it and moved on. Now I welded this in position. In hindsight, watching the video now, I probably could have bolted an extension onto the flange that's on the roller and it would have made um, welding this a lot more easier. But while I was doing it, I was just thinking about time and I would rather struggle in the moment to save time overall. Because you know the saying, time is money. And I was also looking for a challenge while welding this. And this was definitely a challenge for me. I welded what I could in position and then I'd done a vertical up positional at the end. and I've got my steps there to help me out, otherwise I'll be welding way above my head. I'm doing a few dry runs just to make sure I can reach.
And this is what I'm talking about. Watching the video back, I'm thinking, what was I thinking? What a silly way to weld. But in the moment, if it can save 10, 15, 20 minutes, then go for it. And now I'm capping it. And to be honest, seeing the safety involved in this video, I'm kind of embarrassed. Next time I'm gonna make sure I didn't take risks like this, because I could have so easily fell. So I've welded what I could, grant my start stops, and I'm going around to weld the rest. Right here I hit the rollers, so I took the pipe off, got it into position, and I've done a little positional at the end. In the moment it did save time not having to source anything to bolt onto the flange, but watching back now, it probably would have been a better idea just to do it the correct way rather than the quick way. But any excuse to practice my um, positional welds There we go, it's all done now. Not the best welds, but I'm happy with them. And this Fronius machine makes light work of all of these welds. Sometimes I think, is it me or is it just a machine? And if you've made it this far, you are a legend. And um, don't forget to check out my um, description. I've got 10% off any welding supplies that you need or other equipment or tools from Craigmore Welding Suppliers. And if you liked what you see, subscribe and hit that bell notification for weekly videos like this, hopefully every Friday. Thanks for watching.